And welcome everyone, it's that special time of the week again, it's time for Cape TV. Uh, a kind of late one, wouldn't you agree, Matt? We took Easter off. We did, we took a, a week off because everyone got bit too busy. Mm -hmm. Too busy, too full of ham, pumpkin pie, and other delicious things. It, it's funny, we were going to do this show, and then I was going to tell Matt, it's like, well, maybe we can go on like a brief hiatus until everything comes back again, you know, Flash and Supergirl and everything. Then I looked at the calendar, oh crap, it comes back next week. Yeah, yeah that we kind of left it to last minute since they, they were on break for like, what, four weeks, I think? They were. That we worked yeah. through, that we found material to work through. <laughs> yeah, we kind of forgot about them going on break a little bit. Well, that was always my idea, because I'm like, you know, I, I, I don't want to give people lackluster shows. I don't want to give people shows full of crap just to do it. So it's like, well, you know, maybe we'll go on break when the shows come on break, and then we can come back and everyone can be nice and excited. Uh, apparently we didn't need to. Uh, apparently we were able to fill the show with enough quality material. <laughs> yep. And speaking of quality material, uh, I know we said we would do it in the previous episode, but Matt and I both didn't do our TV watching homework for Legion. I've now finished Legion, and we'll close out the show with talking about Legion some is what we're going to do. There we go. So you got that, everyone. But starting things off this week, we have the all-new Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 18, No Regrets. Yes, continuing the framework storyline. And, what and this one, this one was really good. It was. I was going to say, like, the, I, the episode from last week I don't remember near as vividly. But, yeah, this was this was really good. You know, S.H.I.E.L.D. this season kind of feels like a big, long movie. And that's something that's kind of true of all the shows we're talking about this week. Yeah, yeah, totally. This, uh, this episode once again featured uh, Daisy and Gemma hooking up with the underground rebel resistance there to try and fight their evil Hydra overlords, and specifically, they're trying to get back some VIP hostages, is what they're trying to get. Yeah, some very important people to Mace and to um, Agent... I'm blanking on his name. Yeah, Ward. Yeah, Ward. Agent Ward. Ward, evil McHandsome guy. <laughs> yeah. That one. It's uh, it's it's interesting too that you mentioned Ward. This is this is actually kind of a focus piece for Ward and Gemma because Gemma does not like Ward whatsoever because of what he did in the real world, what he did in their world, and yet this Ward is trying so hard to be liked and trying so hard to be her friend. Yeah, apparently we we're, we're actually going to find out like the reason why that, and it basically boils down to because he wasn't found by John Garrett, he was found mm. by Victoria Hand. Interesting. And that, that's why he's good. <laughs> Int very interesting. You know, it's so sad that Bill Paxton isn't with us anymore because I'm sure if he was, he would have showed up in here. Oh, totally. In fact, speaking of characters who show up, because this is a digital world and because anyone who's dead can be alive again in here, Agent Trip comes back. Yeah, that was uh, really nice to see that guy again. I, I kind of missed him after he got killed by the Terrigen Mist, and he was such a good character, so it's good that he's back now. He was. He was a very sad death, and we're far enough along in the show now where you could forget about him, because him and Matt kind of came around in, like, the same season, and Matt kind of supplanted him. He kind of did, like, mm -hmm. all the trippish stuff, because, like, when Matt started, he was just the mechanic. He didn't get out in the field all that much. That was Tripp's thing. Yep. And then Mac just kind of became like Trip. But yeah, it's really cool seeing that actor again. It's really nice yeah. that he's back. But once again, in my nerdy thinking, I'm like, well, got those LMD bodies. Maybe you should uh, download Digital <laughs> Trip into an LMD body so he can come back, huh? And then you got then you got a super strong LMD on the team. Yeah, it's a good asset, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yeah, and, and this episode, much like most of the episodes in this framework arc, they, they, they're pulling references from the series going back like two seasons stuff like we had that that doctor that um, Fitz and Simmons worked for when they were um, just when Hydra took over that that doctor who was kind of like the the lab tech leader in in Gemma's lab yes that guy like, yeah and, and he even like took took um I think it was Fitz's super soldier serum and, and with it with the dash of peppermint. And Very he good. and used that, and I thought that was a really great pull of like continuity. It absolutely was. Yeah, we're seeing people all over the place. Uh, another bit of continuity gags that they get in on in this episode. Uh, what is it when uh, when Mac's daughter is reading like her propaganda Hydra school book? Who's one of the guys we see in there? Daniel Whitehall, aka the Kraken. 
Yeah, yeah. I like that that they inserted themselves into all of this. They also they also mentioned like the Bakshi News Network, and I'm like, oh, is that the evil Hydra Fox standing in this world? Because they had a villain called Bakshi a couple seasons back. <laughs> Lots of good continuity gags and pulls. And, uh, oh, speaking of Mac, and we were, you know, they really do a good uh, job pulling your heartstrings this episode because we get to see him interacting with his daughter, Hope, who is, of course, not real in the real world. And Gemma kind of has this feeling of like, oh, I'm going to pull the plug on all of this, which means I'm essentially going to be killing this guy's daughter all over again. Yeah. That's really sad. Yeah. Yeah, they, they did such a great job with uh, with Mac and his daughter and everything. And they they even do like a really cool thing when Mac kind of starts to realize all this isn't real or anything. Mm-hmm. And when he starts talking about like history and stuff, how like stuff like the Holocaust and everything, while he knows it happened, it's not in any books or anything about history or anything. And that would happen with, you know, Nazis ruling the earth and everything. Yeah, civil rights never happened. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not in our world. It was Hydra rights all the way. <laughs> Which is no rights at all. Uh, th- this all culminates into a really awesome fight scene between Jeff Mace, the Patriot, and Super Soldier May. Yeah, yeah. They give her the, the Super Soldier Serum that's kind of like a like an hour-long Super Soldier Serum. Very, very contained. Which is and it was, it was a was brutal using. fight. It was yeah, a, it was a brutal fight. <laughs> it was really good. I mean, May is dangerous enough as she is. Then you shoot her up with Super Soldier Serum, and she yeah, she she wrecks house. But it's cool because it's a fight. But it's more than a fight. It's characterization for Shield, where she's like, you know, ah, just kill me, you thug, you animal. And he's like, if I was a thug and an animal, I would, but I'm not, so I won't. Yeah, he ends up saving them, saving May as well. And May kind of, I think that was the point in May's uh, storyline where she starts to realize that Hydra may not be all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, because she sees that they have like a secret detention facility where they're brainwashing children with the same brainwashing technology from a couple seasons back. Yeah, that ready to comply stuff. Again, wow, just pulls from all over the place. Like this, this was a really rewarding episode if you kept watching S.H.I.E.L.D. for as long as me and Matt have. Yeah, and I think I think it was this episode or last episode, but um, when we saw the island that uh, Radcliffe has sort of been imprisoned on, the really cool thing is, and someone pointed this out to me, is the house that he is in uh-huh. is an exact replica of the house from Fantasy Island. <laughs> and I thought that was a really great bit of continuity and like cool gag and everything with what's going on and everything. You you are on the Fantasy Island. Everything here is a fantasy on this island. Yeah. That is funny. Uh, Radcliffe, once again, continues to probably be one of my favorite, most interesting characters on this, because you hate him for the choices he's made and the evil that he's helped foster and everything. But also, he suffers for it all over the place, and he's like one of the few people who is actually dead and who can't leave the framework, and if they shut off the framework, he will be gone forever. Yeah. He really is trapped in his own personal hell. And, like, he had, like, the best of intentions. He was like, oh, I wanted to make the world better. You know, I'm a scientist. I'm a futurist and everything. And it's just bitten me in the ass super hard. <laughs> I, I I could imagine them giving him, in like, an LMD body maybe. Because I'd really want him to stick around because the actor John Hanna is a fantastic actor. He's, he's wonderful. And he's had a hell of an arc since they picked him up in the Inhuman season to now. They've actually done a lot of really, really good work with his character. Yeah. He, he, he is a character, and I like that. Uh, speaking of Fitz, because Fitz, you know, the, the kind of arc of evil Fitz has been a thing uh, for the last two episodes. We saw him uh, execute uh, Radcliffe's wife. Which, yeah, you know, yeah. Which shocks Gemma, because she's like, no, we can save him, you know, no, we can do this. You know, he's he's the man I remember, he's the man I love. Only to be like, nope, no, he isn't. And the reason he is that way is because, oh, his dad is in his life in this world, and his dad's a piece of shit. Yeah, his shitbag dad is the one who's sort of controlling him, kind of, and sort of teaching him all how to be a shitbag. Most definitely. Who is that actor who played his dad? I've seen him in a bunch of stuff, and he always plays a bad guy in everything. Yeah, no, I, I don't know who he is, but yeah, I've seen him in bad guy roles before as well. He's a, He's real good. 
and it's funny they don't let you know that uh, he's he's his dad right away. It's only later on yeah. you find it. And I'm like, that's that's good. That was a good reveal. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, overall, pretty solid episode. Lots of ups, lots of downs. Uh, Daisy, ironically, she was she was in prison for like a chunk of this episode. She didn't get much to do, although she did get a couple funny lines in while they were attempting to torture her. But at the very end of it, she gets her powers back. Yeah, from May. From May, who has now done a full, to borrow a wrestling term, she's done a full face turn now, <laughs> is what it is. And now she's a good guy. And now, you know, uh, Daisy makes a very great decree there where she says, you know, I'm going to bring this whole building down around them, essentially. Yeah, and she probably will. Yeah. Can't wait for that. It's going to be cool shit. She'll really fun this season. Lots of good stuff going on. Yeah. P- perfectly timed, too, with Secret Empire and everything that's happening there. It is again. I don't know whether it was planned. It probably it probably was, but it perfect timing for everything. Absolutely. Uh, d- did you appreciate what I appreciated, and that is that uh, what should we call it? The uh, the Hydra symbol in this world is green, not red. Yes, I did. I, I like the green symbol more than the red one. Green, a la the traditional Hydra, but also green because it's not the Red Skull. It's not his Hydra. It's a completely different branch of Hydra. Yeah. I thought that was fun. So, uh, yeah, that was Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., everyone. Two two pretty solid episodes, all things considered. Yeah, totally. Uh, Now from here, we're going to switch on over to talking about Archer, Season 8, Episode 3, Jane Doe. Now, uh, you didn't see this, Matt, but I did. No, I haven't watched it yet. Well, I will say this much for you. I'll try not to spoil too much for you, but it was another really, really funny episode. What's cool about Archer this season is that it really is playing like one giant movie. One episode stops and then it leads you into the next when you start up again. Oh, okay. They keep doing that because obviously in the previous episode we meet who Cheryl is in the dreamland that Archer is Mm -hmm. in, this 1940s dreamland. And she is an heiress and she's trying to escape her family and it's that old classic film noir thing of like, oh, I need to what is it a fake my own death you're a private detective help me fake my own death thing you saw that right uh yeah yeah that was funny they get into a bunch of shenanigans uh they got busted with the body at the end of that and cyril and uh poovy found them and that's where it picks up here in this episode cool and uh cyril who man cyril is a real bad guy this season cyril makes a very good bad guy yeah? Yeah, he really does, because his idea is once he finds out Cheryl is an heiress, he wants to kidnap her, ransom her back to her family, and then use that money to pay off Len Drexler for the prostitutes that he lost in the first episode. Huh. And uh, he does this, he essentially turns the city jail into his own like personal dungeon, where he books Cheryl as a Jane Doe, puts her in solitary confinement, arrests Archer... And then, you know, tries to do all this. But, of course, Archer escapes, and he escapes with the help of Gillette, because him and the rest of Lana's band got arrested for smoke and reefer. Because, you know, (laughs) of course. (laughs) And they get put into jail, and they have a whole, like, comedy of error things where they basically spend the whole episode trying to escape. And they keep knocking out guards and getting uniforms, but none of them fit Archer. But he keeps wanting to wear them, even though they don't fit him. (laughs) It's it's pretty solid. It's all pretty funny. And because there's no band, uh, Lana, back at Mother's Club, has to try and do stand-up comedy because she figures, well, if there's no music, I can do comedy. <laughs> but she bombs horrifically, and it's it's funny because, you know, Aisha Taylor, very funny woman, does a lot of comedy, so it's, it's funny to see her try super hard to be unfunny. <laughs> she does, like, 20 minutes on syphilis jokes over and over again, like, basically different variations on the same syphilis joke. Oh, so her E3 set. <laughs> yeah, her, basically her E3 set. It's it's no lady boners, but it's close. <laughs> but dumb tish. I like Aisha Tyler. But, uh, yeah, so that that was that episode. It was funny. had a lot of stuff going on. And, oh, we also see Krieger take Barry to try and build him some new cyborg legs. Oh, nice. So we haven't seen the last of Barry. Barry will definitely be a thing moving forward. But yeah, Jane Doe, really funny episode. It's cool to see all this new characterization for all these old characters, but they're still very much the characters we know and love, even if they are in a new setting. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's been really good lately. It really has. Bold, bold move. Bold, reinventive move, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I wonder, too, what they're going to do by the end of this season. Will Archer come out of the dream world? What's going to happen? Yeah, I'd like to see him go into, like, another dream world. Yeah, yeah, that would be funny that they say, what would they do next? They've done detectives in California. They've done old school detectives in California. Where, where do they go next after this? I'd like to see, like, a modern one. Like, I know, like, the series is kind of set in the modern time, but kind of not because it's still got, like, that 60s mm. spy vibe. But I'd like to see, like, a like a gritty cop drama set in 2017 or something. Right, he gets, like, blasted to the future or something. Or he's been in the dream so long when he wakes up, it's the future. Yeah. <laughs> that, would, that would be a funny bit. Uh, you know, they keep implying that Archer in this world had, like, some war experience. It would be funny if they actually turned the clock back and do, like, a war piece. <laughs> Yeah, that, that'd be pretty funny. He, he, Yeah, he could be like a spy for like the OSS or something. Yeah, make it uh, make it like a, whatchamacallit, like I was going to say, like not James Bond, but like the dude who wrote James Bond. Yeah, you could make it like Inglorious Bastards. Mm. Make it a riff on that. You could have all the characters come back just in different roles. Yeah, they could do that. There's a lot of places they could take the show. Hell, do a Western. What would an Archer Western be like? <laughs> Because, like, you have these funny characters, and they work so well, and if this season proves anything, you can put them in any time period, in any situation, and they're still funny because they're such well-put-together characters. Yeah, totally. Definitely. So, there's Archer, everyone. Uh, moving on from there, we have... Uh, I, I took point on that one, and now Matt's going to take point on this one. Doctor Who, Season 10, Episode 2, Smile. Yeah, so, uh, Doctor Who started last week, and... Uh, it started with a new season, not not a new Doctor, same Peter Capaldi Doctor, but we got a new uh, sidekick named Bill, uh, who's a woman who in the first episode is much like Sarah in Legends of Tomorrow and has to keep reminding us that she's a lesbian. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's, that's what happens when you get a bunch of straight writers trying to write a gay character, um, 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 and they say they're gay, and uh, they say they're gay again, and what do gay people do? I don't know. Yeah, uh, but this episode was uh, a lot better. It was a more classic Doctor Who episode. So they go to the future and they're on this planet that after the Earth has been evacuated and there's something wrong with the habitat that's there and they find all these robots that can only communicate in emoticons. <laughs> and they find out that those robots killed everyone on board the ship that that landed there and they've sort of used their nanobots to create this this fake world and everything and it's really it's just a classic doctor who episode they've got to escape the the killer robots and find out what's happened to the to the colonists and everything and eventually they do find out what happened to the colonists and uh they in classic doctor who fashion blow shit up mm -hmm. and turn these emoticon robots into the uh i guess indigenous people of the earth of that planet hmm. so so the people who the colonists who survived in their cryo tubes have to sort of broker deals with them to stay on the planet and everything and everything's fine by the end of the episode it was a really fun episode just classic doctor who stuff and yeah it was a lot better than the first episode that's good haven't they announced some stuff for this season like uh like an older version of the master is going to be coming back now yeah the the master from uh, I think it was David Tennant's run is right. coming back. Yeah, everyone really and, likes that guy. Yeah, and uh, I know like the old school Cybermen are coming back, and uh, they're, they're obviously going to have like Daleks, and if they're Dalek in the first episode, um, oh, did they? Yeah, it was one of the. It was like a quick, quick scene mm -hmm. with the Dalek and everything. But um, yeah, I, I I hope they do more classic episodes like this and not. I, I do like those, like, multi-part episodes, but I like the bottle episodes a bit mm. more. I, I guess, you know, there's a different Doctor Who fan out there for every taste. Uh, where do you stand on, like, every season bringing back the Cybermen and the Daleks and the Master? Do you like it when they do that, or do you feel they, like, rely on that stuff too much sometimes? Uh, well, I know some seasons relied on it too much. I know some Matt Smith seasons relied on, on bringing back the Daleks and... um. Oh, there was another villain. I can't remember which uh, the other villain was. Um, but they, they rely too heavily on bringing them back. But I think this season might be a bit different since we've got 
so many new stuff happening in in like the trailers and stuff there's like new villains and aliens and everything and that's pretty cool what uh, what would you say would be the hallmark of the capaldi season so far this is this is the second season with capaldi isn't it uh yeah i, I it's really hard to keep track because the seasons are so far apart from each other mm. um thanks Britain. i think yeah i think <laughs> yeah you and your taking two years to make two episodes of something um <laughs> I liked the – I can't remember what the episodes were called. I think one was called Heaven Sent where he's, like, trapped in a castle and he's got to get through this, like, time barrier and everything. I, I remember that episode was really great and I, sh- I should really go back and watch it. I think it's on Netflix. But, um, yeah, it was really great. And I like that um that 50th anniversary episode they did with, like, all the Doctors. Mm. I thought they did that very well. Was it Was it all the Doctors or just all the Doctors who are alive still? <laughs> they did all the doctors who were alive except for Christopher Eccleston who didn't want to appear in it. Um Aww, that's unfortunate cuz Eccleston like a lot of people Eccleston was my first doctor but it seems like he's the <laughs> one who wants to play ball the least with these. Yeah, um yeah, they did they did it with like all the doctors and and like stand-ins and everything cuz they they had a scene where all the doctors were together. It was the first well. red of Doctor Who. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. And then they morph, it's who in time! <laughs> and, then they, and then they fight the Machine Empire from resurrecting the Dragon Zord on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you joke, but that could totally be an episode of Doctor Who at some point. <laughs> That's what I would do. If they ever let me write it, I would just reskin old Power Rangers episodes and see if anybody noticed. The thing is, they probably wouldn't. They probably wouldn't. You just say, oh, this is a Doctor Who villain, a Cyberzord or something. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, what's with that dude with all the exposed muscle and piping and chrome on him? This is Lord N. Yeah. <laughs> He's a bad guy from the moon. Yep. Space dumpster. <laughs> That's what he travels in. <laughs> so, uh, so good is what you were saying. You enjoyed Smile. I did. It was classic Doctor Who. Awesome. That's great to hear. I, I've watched a little Doctor Who. I watched all of Eccleston, all of Tenet. Haven't watched any since then. But then again, I have the means to, so I probably could. Yeah. Now, uh, it, here's one I didn't put on the list, and I feel like an idiot, because of course we should talk about it. Uh, Samurai Jack. Oh, yeah. So much of what we've been asking for came to pass in the last episode. We saw the Scotsman again. Yes, and he was everything I hoped for. Same here, an old grizzled bastard who's still waging war on Aku from his wheelchair. <laughs> his gun has gotten even bigger on his leg now because he can do that, and he has an army of red-headed daughters, which is amazing. I know, it's so good. And, and he's such a dad, too, when his one main daughter is there. It's like, what are you doing? Are you going dancing? Cover yourself, you daft girl. <laughs> <laughs> but dad, aww. I like this idea that all this time Jack has been gone, the Scotsman has just been basically harassing Aku this whole time. <laughs> yeah, just, just trolling him, basically. <laughs> he's nothing better to do. He's defeated all other opponents, so why not mess with Aku? And then he dies, and it's really sad. But then it gets really awesome because he becomes a Star Wars Force ghost. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm a ghost now. You struck me down. I'll be more dangerous than you could ever know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think he did that just to, like, it's like his final victory over Jack. Now he can harass Jack forever from from beyond the grave. <laughs> it's it's kind of perfect because with the Scotsman, I thought they were going to pull a thing too because he's the only other person to also have a magic sword with magic runes. I'm like, is will he be able to stay young because of Scot uh, because of Scottish runes? Will that be his answer? Yeah, but yeah, I, I like that he's a ghost now and he can continue to mess with Jack. Uh, speaking of Jack, over with him and the other daughter of Aku, whose name is Ashi, we find out. Yep. He uh he basically tries to give her like the true history of the world to try and like deprogram her of all of the horrible stuff you know the mothers of Aku and everything have been telling her her whole life. Mhm. And it gives us a nice snapshot into how messed up the world of Samurai Jack is where it's like yeah you know he cut down all the trees to build up his industry horrible aliens and monsters from other worlds come here. And are allowed to live here in exchange for just, you know, bringing pain and misery. 
Yeah. Which is a question I always wondered in the Samurai Jack feature. It's like, this feature seems pretty normal. And I know Aku built the robots. What's up with all the aliens and monsters and everything? What's their deal? Yeah, well, now, now we kind of have an answer for that. Yeah, they just came from elsewhere. All right, right on. Fair enough. Good ex- uh, g- good answer. I'll yeah. take it. Uh, uh, Aku put like a big, like, uh, like welcome to Las Vegas sign out, <laughs> out, out in Earth's orbit. He put out a Craigslist ad. Uh, single <laughs> single planet accepting all monsters from other places. Up for anything. <laughs> <laughs> up up for destruction <laughs> and that's how we got him it's as easy as that it, it's funny too jack in the last couple episodes has refused to put any clothes on you notice that yeah yeah he's just kind of he, he's gotten to that age where he's just he's at that fuck it age yeah just <laughs> just doesn't care he's like well my my clothes are only gonna get ripped off my body anyway by something trying to kill me i don't, I don't even <laughs> care anymore man i'll clothe myself in the blood of my enemies <laughs> and he does i like he tries to steal some clothes so he's got like a pimp hat and like a prince jacket <laughs> yeah that was awesome that's what he <laughs> chooses to walk around and i'm like nice nice <laughs> But yeah, that was Samurai Jack. I I mean, I guess we're at the halfway point now, or we're almost at the halfway point now for the show. Yeah, I I think it's only like eight episodes or something, isn't it? It might be ten. Legion was eight. This might be ten. No, okay. Okay. It's very short, though. And very wonderfully paced, too, from meeting the daughter, to having Jack fight the daughter, to having him turn her and everything, to having him lose the sword, but I I still not know what the deal with the sword is. Yeah, we still haven't gotten anything about that, and I I was kind of surprised that we haven't gotten anything about that. Maybe they're leaving that for, like, the last two episodes or something? Probably when he gets his shit together. I mean, here here Jack really has a breakdown because he thinks he killed a bunch of children. He thinks he killed a bunch of furry baby children. (laughs) (laughs) Only for him to find out, no, no, you didn't actually kill those children, Jack, but... He ends up leaving with that weird, shadowy ghost samurai who's been following him everywhere. Yeah, I'm wondering who that could be. I, is it someone, or is this just another one of Jack's delusions? Is this like his inner demon he must overcome? Yeah, it could be. Because he's clearly seeing a lot of stuff that's not there. I, I like he's getting harassed by like a version of himself from the old show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like that as well. He, he's, so, he's super fucked up in the head. Yeah, he, he re- and wouldn't you be after 50 years on your own with everything trying to kill you? Yeah. It's, it's funny, too, this show, one of the most amazing things about it is they cast it so perfectly well. Because basically every other male voice you hear is just Maurice LaMarche, is just the voice of Samurai Jack. Mm. And every female voice you hear is just Grey Delisle, who's the voice of Ashi, so they just voice freaking everybody in the show. <laughs> I think I think it's Greg Baldwin who does the voice of Aku, but he's not even in all that many episodes. But basically, you have an entire show with only three voice actors. And that's how they're able to make it. It's cheap. Yeah, and you can spend more time on board-driven animation, which, hey, more power to you. So that Samurai Jack continues to kick ass. Can't wait for the new episode. Yeah. Definitely. Now, from there... I guess we can close out this show by finally uh, going back and addressing some past business. Matt and I had dropped off watching Legion three episodes in for a Mm -hmm. bunch of different reasons, right, Matt? Yeah, mainly because they just kept being weird for the sake of being weird. Didn't feel like it was really doing anything each episode. Just kind of doing the same sort of thing. Yeah, it was being very postmodern. It's like, we're going to screw your mind, man in the same way every week and i'm like okay look i enjoyed the mind screw for the first episode but at some point you got to make stuff happen and it really did feel like in those first three episodes maybe only one thing of note happened in an hour-long show and it's like no thank you that's that's not enough Mm -hmm. and everyone kept telling us you got to get back on in it gets really good it has a good ending you know it's got a lot of stuff going on yeah they were right yeah a lot of stuff happened in the fourth episode actually yeah, episode four and episode five is where it started sort of turning into an actual X-Men comic book show. I, I, I will admit, though, that I'm glad we waited, that we could watch it all in one sitting, because that was definitely the better way to absorb it. Totally. You, this is a show you need to watch one after the other and not have a week or so in between episodes. 
Yep, yep, most definitely. Uh, the fourth episode really took me aback because we're introduced to Jeremy Clement's character. A, fl- a Flight of the Concord is in this show. Yes, that was great. He's he's basically playing shitty Professor X is what he's playing. Like, he wants to be a smart guy. He wants to be an academic. He's even trying to give a speech like what Charles Xavier gives at the beginning of each movie. Yeah. Only to fail at it super hard. And I'm like, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, it was, it was so great seeing him. And, and also, Aubrey Plaza as the, the, the villain. That man, that surprised me so hard. Well, it didn't surprise me because people spoiled it for me online, of course. But, <laughs> but to actually see it, to actually be like, oh, they're going there. She, she's the Shadow King. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've, I've mentioned before I have a huge crush on, on Aubrey Plaza. I didn't think I could love her anymore. This show made me love her more. And in fact, the Shadow King might be one of my favorite Marvel villains at this point. Yeah? Yeah, because so insidious and just so weird and so fucked up. And the relationship the Shadow King has with David. And how, he, again, because he chooses to become Aubrey Plaza. He can look like anything. He chooses to look like that. And he's forever the devil on the shoulder. Like, yeah, take drugs. Yeah, do this. Yeah, do whatever. Kill all those people. You can do it. I think, like, that's a really interesting place for a villain to live. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. To be, like, this ultimate tempter to the dark side and everything. I thought that was really, really well done. Uh, what else was going on with it? Uh, it's, it's funny, too, you know, the other thing that kind of bugged me about the show in the first three episodes was kind of David himself, and it's this idea where it's like, you know he's an unreliable narrator for all this, oh, no, you're not crazy, you're just a mutant. Now you're crazy. Yeah, yeah, you can't really rely on what he says. I don't believe a goddamn thing you say, which made me like the fourth episode because he's basically in a coma for the good a good chunk of it in the astral plane talking to Jeremy Clement, and we actually get to know and understand the other characters better. Man, man, I love the carries. I think the carries are a great idea for an X Men. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're great. They're twin spirits. One exists inside the other. And they kind of need each other, and one ages, and the other doesn't. I'm like, they're a show unto themselves, I think. <laughs> and they're, th- it, it, that hit me, too, where it's like, well, what kind of mutants are we dealing with here? These are totally like the faceless, nameless X-Men in the background of the school. That's who they are. Yeah, the, these, are these are those X-Men you see in the X-Men films that are like kids like playing basketball. Mm-hmm. Th- these are those kids. <laughs> these are the jobber X-Men. <laughs> is what these are. These are like that they will never have a name or a costume, but they have powers and this is them just trying to live their lives and everything. And you know, obviously the show is filled with as I mentioned before, it's very postmodern. They do a lot of camera tricks and a lot of editing tricks to try and mess with your mind. You you went to film school, Matt, you've worked with cameras, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yes, they go way overboard with it, with the Dutch angles and the moving the camera upside down and everything. Which, which that kind of annoyed me too at first. I'm like, I get it, you're crazy, you're trying to make me feel crazy, I get it. <laughs> Even stuff too, like they'll film the opening in like really high definition, like 4K, black bars and everything, and then film the rest of the show like a TV show. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really strange. And I'm like, what the, what the fuck was up with that? <laughs> <laughs> and then like well my favorite part about it is when the show actually unwinds and stops taking itself seriously they'll have dance numbers and singing numbers there's a bit <laughs> where david is sitting in in his sex room because obviously he's dealing with a woman that uh, that he can't touch he's basically the rogue of the show so he creates a psychic sex room because wouldn't we all if we had psychic powers yeah, it's his spank bank it, it's oh my god it's literally his spank bank <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah that name didn't catch on like astral plane but it should have <laughs> and he's sitting there and he's playing the ukulele and it's really creepy and it's the most creepy ukulele playing thing you've ever seen and he's rocking <laughs> back and forth and i'm just like shit man so yeah all in all legion actually was cool by the end of it i still think it went a little overboard in a few places I would have liked to have kind of cooled its shit a little bit, but yeah, it's mm-hmm. definitely one of the more original superhero shows they've ever done. Yeah, I, I hope season two follows on from season one, where 
it's now more comic booky, mm. and they don't sort of do like what they did with season one, how like the first three or four episodes are really psychedelic and all that sort of stuff, and then it goes comic booky just on like a turn of a dime. Um, I hope they don't do that again. Again, I appreciate the show for what it did, but at the same time, too, it might just become a show I have to binge watch. Is the thing if 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 it continues yeah. to be like this. Because I was yeah. really happy I got to sat, sit down and watch episodes like four to eight in one sitting where I could really digest it and understand and be like, okay, this is what they're going for. This is what they're doing. Because another thing they do, every episode tries really hard to be different from the one that preceded it. Like there is, there is no framework. There is no formula or structure. This is a thing that really bucks structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, hey, good on them for making a show that can still stay coherent while also bucking pretty much all structure. But, you know, I, I guess TV watchers like myself were creatures of habit. It's like, but, but I like a little structure in my madness. I like controlled chaos. Mm-hmm. Is what I do. Twin Peaks is what I would call. This is like the Twin Peaks of superhero shows. Totally, totally. You can, you can put that one on the box, and Joel of Cape TV says it's the Twin Peaks of superhero shows. <laughs> I'm sure someone else has said that as well. I'm sure they have too at some point. It's it's a very pretentious TV show argument I'm making. I'm sure someone's made it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so any closing thoughts on Legion, Matt, or any of the other shows we've talked about this week? Uh, not really. It was all a pretty good week yeah. for TV. Yeah, no, no stinkers in there. Next week will be big too because, as we mentioned, Supergirl is coming back. The Flash is coming back. Yeah, I think everything comes back except for... Legends of Tomorrow, which has finished its season. Yeah, Legends is done. Was there anything else we were going to pick up and talk about at any point? Um, uh, I'll have to see like what's starting because I know like like I think some of the HBO shows start very soon. Mm, oh yes, you were all excited for Silicon Valley. Yes, that starts tomorrow. Is 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 it okay if I admit I'm really behind on Silicon Valley? I think I watched the first episode when it aired and then never went back to it. No, nah, that's fine because no matter how many people i talk to they always say what's silicon valley <laughs> like no one knows about it yet it's gotten four seasons <laughs> i i know it exists because kumel najani is on it i'm a huge kumel fan and i and, and i've never i've never watched it and also the guy everyone loves from deadpool is in it too yeah tj miller they're both fantastic in it that's good i should maybe go back i got a lot of shows that i'm starting and haven't finished yet i started that show black sales on stars started yep. <laughs> silicon valley started uh peaky blinders and i haven't finished any of them I've, I've gotten like one episode deep on all of them i'm at that point in my tv watch i'm like oh, well, let me try a little of everything and see what sticks <laughs> yeah black sales that show had four seasons which is surprising yeah and i'm like three seasons behind <laughs> i remember that and like the blackbeard show came out around the same time it's like two pirate shows at once yeah what is this yeah, what is this pirate thing? Did they do enough Western shows? Did they do enough Deadwoods and Hell on Wheels? <laughs> that's that's another show that started recently. The Sun, which is another Western show that they put in the time slot of Hell on Wheels. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm guessing their hope is like, oh, we need another Western show here. There's open people come and watch this now. Yeah, keeping Westerns alive until... Westwood, uh, Westworld Season 2 starts. I might actually watch The Sun because I'm looking it up now and Pierce Brosnan's in it. Ooh, that'd be fun. We like Brosnan on this show. We are we are a pro, uh, pro Brosnan show, Cape TV. We want to let that be known. <laughs> he, he gets a pass from us. So yeah, that's that's a good one, everyone. I guess on that note, we're almost at our 40-minute mark. I, I totally wasn't stalling for time to get us to 40 minutes or anything. Totally not. That's that's not a weird obsessive compulsion I have to try and get this show to 40 minutes. Because that would just be <laughs> weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> as, uh, as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, as always, in the comment section down below, be sure to tell us what was your favorite thing that came out on TV this week. What would you like to hear us talk about in the future? And if you want to download the show and carry it around with you all the time, you can head on over to the Comic Multiverse SoundCloud page. You can do just that. You can also listen to the other show Matt and I do, the Comic Multiverse. Yes, and we've got an episode coming up this week. Yes, it's going to be a hell of an episode because a lot of comics came out this week. we got to talk about The Button. we got to talk about Secret Empire. 
Yeah, lots and lots of good comics. Got to talk about Trinity and Superman. Superman's been busy, hasn't he? Oh boy, has he ever. He's been doing lots of good stuff. So there you have it, everyone. Thank you so much for listening, and we will be back next week. Uh, So hear you then, then. Bye-bye. Bye.